Hey, welcome. Thank you for coming to listen to the Lichen Sclerosis Podcast. My name is Kathy, and this is our journal of learning about and living with lichen sclerosis. Each week, I research or speak to somebody about an aspect of lichen sclerosis. This week, I want to share a lesson in my five-week program with you that's been a real big focus in my life recently, and it's giving yourself grace. It's about how we talk to ourselves about ourselves and just that inner dialogue that we have that's so important. So if you listen to my previous episode, Listen to Your Body, you know that I haven't been doing well and I'm still not doing well. I'm fatigued all the time. I get up in the morning and I'm tired. I eat. I go back to bed. I may take a nap. I wake up and I'm still tired. (sighs) I get up and I try to do stuff and all I want to do is just close my eyes. It's just so tired all the time. And it's just a struggle to do anything. If you follow me on social media, I haven't posted in the last two and a half weeks except for one post, which was to promote last week's episode. I didn't even promote the Listen to Your Body episode, so you may have not heard it. I'm also losing my words. My short-term memory is shot. I'm achy all over. My back has been killing me for the last two, three days. My arm aches. The muscles in my arm ache. It, I'm just not in a good place. And I've been having to practice these tips that I put out for the ladies in my program because I have to show myself grace in this moment. I'm not where I want to be. I'm not being able to do what I want to do. And yeah, it's been causing me some frustration. In the beginning, I was really disappointed because I felt like I was letting you down and letting myself down because I had goals that I wanted to reach and not having the physical energy to do these things. Obviously, they didn't get done. And I'm a perfectionist. I drive myself hard. And when I say I'm going to do something, you're damn right I'm going to do it unless there's something that absolutely holds me back. And right now, my health is really holding me back. But that first week when I wasn't feeling well and I figured, oh, it'll pass, I still had hope, you know. I didn't figure I would be here two and a half weeks, almost three weeks later, and still be feeling this way. So I had to reevaluate my expectations of myself. I had to set new expectations. And then that would cause, obviously, less disappointment because I didn't have these really high goals. So I wanted to give you an update on where I am right now. I have an appointment to go see a specialist on the 27th. I will hopefully get some answers to what's going on and I can get better so I can get back to doing what I love, creating content for you, sharing information and raising awareness. But in the meantime, I want to share with you the tips that I share with my ladies in the five-week program, Get Okay with LS. And that's another thing. I'm going to have to push that start date back because I literally don't have the energy. And I do a lot of live things with that program. I do live lessons and then we do a live meetup and I'm checking in with you. And I just I don't have the energy to give you what it deserves. So giving yourself grace, like I said before, that's about how you talk to yourself the way you see yourself, not beating yourself up. All of those things are included in giving yourself grace. 
So the first thing is you can't beat yourself up for what you don't know. You're human. You're doing the best that you can with the knowledge that you have at this moment. Every day we're learning something new. I'm constantly learning. And every time I learn something new, I adapt what I'm doing with the new information. And you're doing the same thing. Every time you learn something new, you're making adjustments to what you do to either simplify or better whatever your processes are or whatever your knowledge is. Now you have this new kernel of information. So it's super important that you don't beat yourself up for what you don't know. You can't do better if you don't know better. If you want to do better, then find the information so you can improve what you can change and accept what you can't. But do not be a bully to yourself. Number two, do not compare yourself to others. There are amazing women on social media who are raising awareness for lichen sclerosis, vulva cancer, all kinds of different genital conditions. And each one of them does their thing a little different. Some of them have been out there for years. And I've only started the podcast in February. February 19th, I think, was my first day in Apple Podcasts. It was my official launch. So it's been six months If I go around comparing myself to these other accounts, guess what? I'm going to make myself miserable and I'm just going to be looking at everything I'm not doing and I'm not going to be doing anything. I'm going to be stuck in this spiral of negativity, comparing myself. What am I not doing? Why why are they better than me? It's a losing game. It's always going to be a losing game to compare yourself. I don't know how long each of these accounts have been out there. I don't know what their struggles is. I don't know what their journey is. I don't know if they have help or if they're doing it by themselves. I don't know any of that. And you know what? I don't care. I don't think about it because that doesn't help me. The only thing that's going to help me is to do the best that I can do and to learn what I can do for you. And you got to be the same way. You got to do the best that you can do so that you can do the best that you can do for the people that you are helping, that you love, for your family. When you are on the internet and you see someone post maybe, oh, I've been symptom free for my LS for two years and all I did was cut out dairy. And you figure okay, well, I'm going to cut out dairy and then I'm going to be symptom free. And here you go and you cut out dairy and you still have symptoms. You're going to beat yourself up worse because you're like, what am I doing wrong? She was able to be symptom free and all she did was cut out dairy. You don't know that. That's all they're telling you. You don't know that that's all they did. And your body is an individual I've said it a million times. LS is an individualized disease. It's going to affect all of us differently. So you got to find what works for you. You cannot compare yourself to what works for somebody else. Now, I'm not saying you don't try and you can't maybe adopt some of the things. Absolutely do that. But do not compare your results to their results. If you want to try cutting out dairy and see how it works, absolutely do that. No doubt about it. But do not compare your results to theirs. And that leads to number three. Do what works for you. LS is trial and error. That's the only way we're going to find out what works for us. Because, again, it's so individualized. But do not force yourself to be somebody who you're not. Listen, some women find that if they cut out sugar, it takes away a lot of their symptoms. That's amazing for them. But let's say you love your sweets. You are a sweets girl. 
you will eat a piece of candy or chocolate any chance you get. And you say, okay, well, she was able to be symptom free by cutting out sugar. So I'm going to cut out sugar. Now you're having no sugar and you go a week, two weeks, three weeks in and you are a freaking monster because you want your sugar and you are going through the motions of not being able to have what you want. Your emotions are all over the place and your body is saying, I want sugar because that's who you are. You love sugar. It's not sustainable for you to be like this other person. What you can do is adapt. Maybe you cut out a little bit of sugar at a time. Cut your sugar down by a quarter each week or every two weeks until you can get to a level that you might see a change in your lichen sclerosis. But be true to who you are because you can only sustain not being you for a certain amount of time before you crack. Can we change? Absolutely, you can make changes. But I don't believe that you can change on a drop of a dime and it be sustainable. I don't think it's healthy and I don't believe you should do it. That's my opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion and I know there's going to be people who disagree with me and that's okay. This is my platform and that's what I believe. My whole point is do what works for you. Make the adjustments for you, but don't do it because she did it and think you can be her. You can't. Make the adjustments and see what works for you. The easiest way that you can do this is to make small goals that lead up to bigger goals. And While you're doing that, celebrate those small goals. Like I said, take a week or two to cut 25% of your sugar out. And then when you get to that two weeks, if you've done it, celebrate it. Absolutely make a big deal about it. And then do it again and do it again. And eventually when you hit that big goal of cutting out sugar from your diet, it's not a shock to your system. It's not of, oh my God, who is this new person? It's a gradual change. And if you don't hit that small goal, it's okay. Learn why you didn't do it and then start over. Sometimes when we miss those small goals, we get overwhelmed or we start feeling like, We can't do anything right. We're worthless. Again, those negative voices in our heads start chirping and bringing us down. Then we have the negative emotions and it's an awful spiral. When we do this, we start getting overwhelmed or anxious or fearful of what LS was going to bring to our future. And we don't need that. So number four, practice mindfulness if you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious. And all that means is when you feel yourself getting to that point of anxiousness, fearfulness, whatever that stressor is, take a moment and ground yourself back into your being, whether that's through a breath or a touch. Notice your being, whether it's your heartbeat, butterflies in your stomach, you have a headache, you have a stomach ache, whatever is going on, notice it. Take that moment to notice how it feels to be in this state and then respond rather than react. Be within yourself and decide how you're going to respond rather than just having a knee-jerk reaction to whatever the stressor is. For example, if you're cutting out the chocolate and you go to work and somebody brought cupcakes for somebody's birthday and you're like oh my god I really want a freaking cupcake but I'm cutting out sugar you have that fight within yourself and you feel like oh my god I'm gonna break I'm gonna break I'm gonna break I'm gonna break oh my god take a deep breath center yourself ground yourself don't focus on the cupcakes focus on something like your breathing or press your hand into your chest and feel that pressure Focus on something within yourself. 
then think about how it is to feel this anxiousness, this desire, the stress that you're feeling right now. And then make a decision on how you're going to respond. That can be by walking away. That can be by making a decision that, okay, I'm not going to deprive myself. I'll just have a half of a cupcake. Or whatever it is that you decide for you, what's right for you, instead of just reacting and Maybe your reaction is you're going to break. You're going to say, whatever, I'm going to eat a cupcake because I want one. And then you eat a cupcake and you're like, forget giving up sugar. And then you go and you eat two or three cupcakes. So rather than having that knee jerk reaction, you practice mindfulness and respond accordingly. Like I said, last week, I'm going to have different voices coming on talking about different modalities on how we can use mindset work to help us work through the stress and negative emotions and negative thoughts. And one of those experts is going to be coming on and giving us the tools for using mindfulness. What I just gave is a very, very broad overview. I'm no expert. I just talk to experts. But I will be bringing an expert on here, hopefully very soon. But in the meantime, you can do that. And the more that you practice that, the easier it's going to be. And this is good for all aspects of life. So those are my four tips for giving yourself grace. Don't beat yourself up for what you don't know and can't do. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Do what works for you and practice mindfulness when you are overwhelmed or stressed. And those are things that I've been having to do these last three weeks to keep myself in a positive headspace and not be overwhelmed by this new health issue and this new state of being that I find myself in. Because right now, I'm not me. I'm, I'm just not. I'm usually doing two, three things at one time and thinking of two or three things that I I need to get done or two or three new ideas. And I'm constantly on the go. And right now I'm forced to pretty much go at a snail's pace. So I've decided to, to listen to my body and slow down. I set new expectations. I'm not posting on social media I'm just going to do the one post when I do put an episode out so that you know when it's out, if that's how you follow me. But if I get to a point where I'm not going to do that, the best thing you can do is subscribe and then you'll get notified on your podcatcher. Because if things get worse, I may skip a week or two with the podcast. I'll definitely be coming back. But if I it's too much for me to record and edit and do all the things I need to do to get the podcast out, then I might have to because I have to listen to my body. And you should too. I hope that you are in a much better place than I am. I'll keep you updated for when I see my specialist and anything else that I may find out of where I am. Hopefully I will start getting some energy soon so I can jump back on social media. I wanted to start doing my lives in a couple weeks and I don't know about that. It's a work in progress. This is a new place for me, but it's going to be what it's going to be. I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to make adjustments, set my new expectations and give myself grace. Don't forget you have one more week. If you want to get a copy of Pull Back Your Power, Dr. Ann Whitehouse's book about rewiring those negative thoughts and those negative signals from your subconscious, just leave a review for the podcast on your podcatcher or or Apple podcast and email me a screenshot at Kathy with a K at lichensclerosispodcast.com and hopefully I will be here next week. So I hope you have an amazing day and I will talk to you then. 
Bye.